guys, it's Stephanie. I am here just to hopefully encourage you. Um, I need the encouragement. We all know what time it is. We all know that he is coming soon. It is so clear when he's coming exactly. It's not clear, but I feel this urgency again in my spirit, which I have not felt in a while, and I feel like the Lord really just wants people to know He is coming. So I reposted a video I did in January, that was the one right before this one, and I had kind of made a list of all the things I could think of or remember that had happened within the past two years, and then a few things like... Israel becoming a nation and things like that um, in that one so if you didn't watch that one you should watch that one I believe it was pretty encouraging it encouraged me just to watch it and remember um, the things because I think sometimes like I said in that video we forget some of the things <laughs> I mean it's easy with so much coming so quickly it's easy to forget details or things that we knew but we have we have so many things have happened to take the place of that that we don't remember that, you know? So I was just trying to bring to my remembrance and to, to yours uh, some of the things that we know line up with Bible prophecy. And so I just wanna recap some of that because I, it was on my new list also, but also add the things that have recently occurred. So, um, of course, many of you already know this because you're watching, right? So we have the food shortages, which some of them I believe are <laughs> caused by man on purpose, possibly. Um, it just seems too coincidental to have so many places burning down. And um, you guys know what I'm talking about. But um, it just doesn't seem like that could be coincidental. It's just that's never happened in the history that I've known of. So um, then there's the crop failures, the, the general crop failures from weather or from pestilence or from um, what happened in India, you know. You guys know about the crop failures in India or the, them not being allowed to spray the crops with certain chemicals which caused a major famine. So um, then there's the floods that have been happening, which have been exponentially worse this year, this year than ever before, I believe. Um, it's all over the world. It's every day you're hearing about floods, multiple places on the same day. And um, very unexpected. And I think I just saw something that happened in Australia um, where a flood and crazy weather happened like hailstones and flooding and and huge gusts of wind and things that they're not used to having so it was very these things are in diverse places like it says in the bible the the seismic activity the um, earthquakes that are 6.0 or higher are increasing daily and you know we we know it it talks about how it'll be like a woman in labor when the Lord is coming like it will increase the intensity will increase like it does when you're in labor and so we see the things increasing we think oh it can't get any worse oh no it keeps getting worse right <laughs> it keeps coming but that just means the baby is about to be born you know and this baby is gonna come when it's time to come <laughs> just like when a woman's giving birth when that baby's ready it's time you know you can't just be like no forget it we're just gonna hold you in there forever it's gonna happen right so um so I said the floods earthquakes and what about the mass animal die-offs you just hear about it all the time birds flying and then they're no longer flying they're <laughs> falling on all the cars or they're um they're fish washing up on shores and just dead animals turning up everywhere and it's just unbelievable fires i didn't even have that on my list there's been so many fires this year increasing like it's been increasing for the past couple years but it's gotten even worse this year it's like Daily, you hear about more more fires happening, and then there's 
you know, I mentioned famine, pestilence. They keep telling us that famine's coming. They tell us that food shortages are coming. They tell us that, and we know it's coming because the Bible tells us it's coming, but we're there, right? The WEF, you guys know what that is, the World Economic Forum. You know what's going on with that. We, we know that the queen died at 70 year, uh, at a 70 year reign. And I feel like that was very significant. I don't know exactly how that's going to tie in, but I feel like there's so much happening that something like that was very poignant. Also, the fact that it seems like leaders are being removed and shifted and changed and um, there's just so many changes happening right now and then there's of course because the Queen died we have we're gonna have King Charles coming in and we know what he said at the last World Economic Forum you know about millions at his disposal disposal who is his I don't know I think I know who he's talking about I think you know who he's talking about but he did not give a name of course then we have the biggest thing I think recently within this last week was the five red, red heifers coming from Texas to Israel and I believe they have been inspected and they have found no, no blemish in them so this means they are ready for sacrifice for the dedication of the third temple which is very key <laughs> to what's happening in the tribulation time and then also the train that they're um, making ready to transport people from Ben Gurion International Airport to the Temple Mount this is all important and um, for it to become a house of prayer for all nations, you know, and so we got the Temple Mount, we got the, um, we got wars and rumors of wars, alliances that are mentioned in the Bible are happening now. We got the One World Religion. They just had that meeting where the Pope. I didn't really see a lot about it, but I do know it's not a good thing. <laughs> so um, they are coming together as you know, a uh, fraternity, humanity, um, it's all focused around that. And of course, the one who can save you was not mentioned, of course. Um, we've got digital currency coming. We've got chips in the hands. We've got scanners for your hands. We've got um, just all these things, the nations against nation. And I believe that in the Bible that refers to... Um, like ethnic group against ethnic group and we're seeing that increasing exponentially also there are so many things happening around this world um of course we've got the lovers of self i don't know if you guys have seen the new ad i don't even know what the phone is but it folds in half you probably have seen it the way they depict that whole thing where the the person is so enamored with their phone they just can't even stand to be apart from it and they lust after it and it's just it's just not good <laughs> it is a, a perfect picture of where we are right now um, and then people you know I talked about this in the last video is people taking selfies of themselves and actually dying because they're not aware of the dangers around them falling off of cliffs and being washed away in floods and just many many things happening because people are so enamored with getting the perfect photo and the perfect thing for their YouTube videos or whatever they're doing <laughs> that they need these pictures for um, so we can call that lovers of self right um, then there's the push for the children there's the push for abortion trafficking um, shots um, and the entertainment the little demon shows and the there, there's so many things we know that Disney has said that they were going to you know they're they're all about indoctrinating the children at this point and um, education they're moving in that direction as well so it's all it's all lining up exactly like the Bible said it would. Then we got the um, LGBTQ agendas, the per perverse generation, the the um, 
the no longer recognizing basic biology. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. The fact that parents are taking their kids to drag clubs and parents are taking their kids to the library to be read to by drag queens. The, the fact that a parent would even consider this to be an option at this point is beyond me. Um, then we have false teachers, false prophets in the pulpits. Um, they don't even believe the Bible. They say it out of their mouth. They don't believe the Bible is true. It's just a good book that they can glean from, but it's not really the Word of God. They're saying these things out of their mouth, and they're putting um, pastors in that aren't even saved. It's They say they're not saved, and yet they're putting in them in the pulpits. Um, the, the worship music seems to be more and more about I, 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 me, 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 than he, 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 <laughs> my God, my love. You know, it's, it's about me, 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 me. I did this. I do this. I will do this. I have done this. I am this. You know, you saved me. You did this for me. And yeah, some of that's good, but some of it is just, it's like, what, where is this going? How am I worshiping the Lord in this, you know? And I talk to my kids about it and I'm like, you know, some songs, you know, are meant as a testimony and aren't necessarily meant to be worship songs that we sing at church. And some songs are, I mean, I have, I've heard very few actual worship songs recently where it's like true worship of the Lord. I feel like it, it always brings the focus to me and myself and I can't I can't even sing it I'm like sitting there going I'm not singing this song I cannot do it so um it's a very it's been eye-opening to me lately and it's been very frustrating actually I feel like I'm like in this limbo of like when do we get to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth <laughs> in a corporate body like I can do that by myself but I'm talking about like corporately um then there's the mockers and the scoffers, the ones who say, where is the promise of his coming? And they are literally saying this out of their mouth, which is so mind boggling, but it's just like true. It's like, he's been, you've been saying for years, he's going to come. Where is he? You know, he's not here yet. So he's probably not coming this year. You know, it's just amazing how quickly they can just blow it off in their life. And a lot of people are just like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't need to know, you know when he's coming back, when he's ready to come back, he'll come back and that's okay. It doesn't matter. You know, and this is Christians, you know, <laughs> so, and I'm like, but it does matter because when you know, when he's coming back, it makes you a little bit more urgent about getting the message out and realizing, Hey, look where we are. And you can start telling people about it. But a lot of people are just like heads in the sand, keep going with my life, keep doing my thing, you know, and then we've got the people who are preaching the best life now and, Live your best life now. I sure hope this isn't my best life now. I really pray when I get to heaven, my best life will be then, you know, right? When we get to be with Jesus, that's when our best life will be. So I just, it, that blows me away that that's like a main message these days. And the world says it, the churches say it. It's like, what is the difference? You know, <laughs> where is the, you're supposed to stand out. We are not of this world. We are peculiar people. They're supposed to think we're strange. If they don't think we're strange, there's a problem. <laughs> anyway, I know. <laughs> um, then there's the alien deception. We, I talked about this in my last video. You know, you know what's going on, like constantly bombarding us with these things. And then peace and safety, peace and security, Abraham Accords, all that stuff. Then we've got the Georgia Guidestone, which I think I talked about in my last video, but the fact that it recently was destroyed is pretty amazing. Then we've got the fig tree generation and you know, I don't know about the Psalm 9010. I really don't care. At this point, we're still the fig tree generation because Jesus spoke about it himself and he said, this generation shall not pass away. So that is still true no matter what, whether the Psalm 9010 was right or not, whether it was right, and it just was a general thing or no matter what, 
Jesus is right. And that is what I know. <laughs> so it is still valid in the sense that this is the fig tree generation. There's no doubt about it. And all the things that are happening tell us that this is the fig tree generation. And all the trees, you know, look at the fig tree and all of the trees. And all of the trees are doing the things that all the trees are supposed to be doing, as the Lord said. So, anyway, I just wanted to recap that for us. I know that there's probably still things happening, probably something happening right this very minute that could be in this video and may not be in there because I'm making it today and not tomorrow. So just be aware, of course, and I know this is not an exhaustive list because I know that there were so many things, the signs of Jonah I talked about. And there's so, you know, of course we have the the thing that got us in lockdown and the thing that they tried to force us to do and still are pushing in some ways, but it kind of dropped off, didn't it? Like, are they going to tell us we don't need it now? <laughs> where's all the, where's all the advertisement and the weird songs they're singing about it? <laughs> anyway, so I'm just, I'm looking at, you know, Jesus is coming, you know, and no matter how we feel, like there's days where I just feel like, how can I do this anymore? How can I continue in this life? Everything is, I was just thinking about this yesterday. It's like, where's the joy in this life anymore? I mean, there's the little things like, of course, my children and, and my family and like, you know, our, I love our home. I love being here. This is a nice place, but do I care if I'm here much longer? No. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go with my family and be with Jesus. And and every day you hear about things, and I try not to become fearful, but I'm telling you, it is hard. It is hard not to be fearful sometimes with everything. And then just the physical things that I deal with that make me feel weak and um, insecure in, in everything. And I know that it's the enemy, and he's just trying to um, distract me. <laughs> Honestly, I know that's what's happening. I haven't been able to sleep. You know, there's so many things, and it, it's like, you know, I don't, I feel like, you know, the Israelites were in the desert, you know, when Jesus delivered them, or when God delivered them from, from Egypt, and they began to complain and grumble. And I know we've been saying we're at the Red Sea moment, you know, and I'm like, am I one of those who's complaining and grumbling like, ah, you know, you've got me out here in this desert and where, when, why did you bring me out here? <laughs> when is this going to end? How are we going to escape this? When is it going to happen? And um, I feel like I just kind of got a piece that it's coming very soon. Our deliverance is coming very soon. And, um... You know, we were at my church. My pastor, thankfully, he does speak on these things. So he talks about these things. He has been, he's always been into eschatology. And so he loves to talk about this. He just talked about the feast yesterday. And he was talking about the Feast of Trumpets and all of the things with that. So um, I love that I'm at the church that I'm in. It's a very small church. <laughs> and I'm the children's pastor there. So, um but I love it, and I love that my pastor, he loves to teach the Word, and he feels like if it's in the Word, it should be taught. <laughs> so I just love that about him. That's like the main reason we're there, because he sticks to the Word. And so, um, anyway, where was I going with that? I don't know. I was just going to say, there's a lot of places out there I know do not talk about this stuff. They don't teach about this stuff. They don't tell people what's happening in this world and that kind of piggybacks what I was going to make more than one video but I think I'm just going to tie it all in together and so I keep hearing people saying that some people even though they're saved they're not going to go in the rapture and I'm like what are you talking about if they're saved they're sealed you know if they have been born again and bought with the blood of Jesus there is nothing that can keep them from him. He says they nothing, no nothing can pluck them out of my hands. No one can pluck them out of my hands. I will not lose one of them. You know, there's scriptures on that. He says 
these are my promised inheritance. And whether they're living rightly or doing all the right things, I mean, we think living rightly, you know, what is that? How many of us live rightly all the time? How many of us never lose our temper and don't, you know, think a wrong thought? You know, these things are all not living rightly also, if you are judging it by that. But what we judge it by is Jesus Christ's righteousness. It says, in the word in Philippians 1 6 this is Paul talking and he says being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ he begun that good work in anyone who is a believer he begun that good work he will complete it right and until the day of Jesus Christ and that's coming right and And I love this quote from Paul, also Ephesians 3, 1, 3, 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. The grace of God is given unto us by the effectual working of his power, not our power. You know, it's a gift of God to eternal life, right? So, um, and I have more verses here, but I'm not sure where I was going with them because I can't remember what scripture was because I didn't highlight it. Anyway, um, so the thing is, is you hear it a lot. And, and my pastor, he, he was talking about this yesterday. Because it had come to his attention as well that people were saying this to, to people. And it's quite a horrible thing to say, really. Um, who decides, right? Who decides who's saved enough and who's not to go, you know? It puts levels on your salvation. It puts works. It puts it back in your court. Um, you must be doing the right thing when Jesus returns or he's not going to take you. What if you're having a fight with your husband? <laughs> What if you're, you happen to be, um, your child happens to be arguing with you at that moment? What if you're um, in a traffic jam and you're kind of frustrated at the moment? What if, you know, any of those things, they're not displaying, it's not displaying the characteristics of the Holy Spirit and what God would want us to have. But does that mean we don't get to go with Jesus? No, it does not. It does not mean that because we are not made righteous by our works. We are made righteous by the Holy Spirit, by God, by Jesus' work in us, right? And Pastor said, one drop of his blood was enough to make you righteous. One drop of his blood was enough to make you righteous. One drop. So, do you think that you messing up will make you unrighteous? If it had to do with us, if, it, if the righteousness is a gift from him, we can't undo that gift by our unrighteousness, by our physical, us doing the wrong thing. He never expected perfection from us. He just wants us to believe in the Son. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed, right? And the Lord will continue the work he begun in you and in me and in all of us. You know, we're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. He's going to change us. We will become incorruptible. Right now, we are corruptible. We are sinful people. We make mistakes all the time. There is no one perfect among us. No, not one. <laughs> and if we think that we can be perfect enough to go in the rapture, that's just another works thing. That's just another thing where you're putting it on that person to be doing everything perfectly at the moment that Jesus arrives. And that's not comforting because what if you accidentally do something? What if you don't even know you're doing something wrong and you find out later, oh, I didn't get to go in the rapture because I did that and I didn't know that that was even something I shouldn't be doing. This is not how this works. You are secure until the day of redemption sealed until the day of redemption we 
we are in him his holy spirit is in us he is communicating with us that is why we know he's coming he's not going to tell us oh jesus is coming oh and by the way you're not going because you i mean the holy spirit is in you talking to you he's telling you these things you know why would he tell you that and then say oh by the way you don't get to go because of this thing you did last year you know no that's not how it works we are made righteous in uh, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus our Lord in Christ Jesus we believe in Jesus right he is powerful and effective his work is powerful and effective in our life you know it's not a partial rapture all means all we are redeemed of the Lord we will be um, you know he's gonna raise those who are asleep first and bring those who lie are alive and remain and he it's a promise we are sealed we are promised him he said not one of us would be lost to him he would not lose one of us so um, anyway I felt like that was important to talk about and um, yeah it's not by us it's by his spirit it's by him he's the one he's the one living in us he's the one making us righteous he's the one we cannot be righteous apart from him we can do nothing apart from him we have to have him so that's the key. If you don't believe in him and you have never put your trust and faith in him, you've never ever had that heart connection and that Holy Spirit inside of you and you've not been born again, then that is what will keep you from going with the Lord. But if you have made that, that decision, you have believed, you have believed that Jesus died was buried and rose again on the third day as it says in the scriptures it was a gift of God it was a gift of God that no man can boast that we cannot boast about this salvation we cannot boast about I was doing this when Jesus came it was so good you know and that's why he took me that is not how it works it is about Jesus it's always been about Jesus everything from the beginning to the end is about Jesus and we need to recognize that so I pray that if you have not believed yet please do now I believe with all my heart that he is coming so soon more soon than we can imagine more soon than we can comprehend the thought of Jesus standing before us as being in his presence as looking into his eyes being right before him is just incredible when you think about it you know and he's coming he's coming and it's one of these days we're just gonna be going along doing the things <laughs> and suddenly in the twinkling of an eye we will be changed and we will hear that trump of God and we will go to be with him where he prepared a place for us he said he would not tell us if it was not so he is not a liar <laughs> he is far from it he is the only truth teller there is and um, let God be true and every man a liar he is the truth the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father but by him and that needs to be said a billion times over because people are trying to corrupt that and twist it and people in churches are twisting it and they're saying basically just make it what you want it Cherry pick what you want, make what you want, do what you want, be who you want, and it'll all work out in the end. That is not right. <laughs> that is not the gospel. And it doesn't set anyone free. It doesn't set anyone free. It doesn't, it doesn't stick. So, if you really love something, you'll, someone, you will tell them the truth. You will tell them the truth that will set them free. And that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to get to the Father is through the Son, Jesus. I can't wait. I can't wait to meet you guys in the air. I can't
can't wait to be there with my family and with Jesus and with all of these watchmen and all of the church body who has loved the Lord and who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, you guys, I love you. Be blessed, and I will talk to you soon.